Good morning, Marissa. Looks like the weeds in my garden have popped up again. I'm gonna need you to take care of that today. I'll be out all day, so I can't do it myself. Be sure to finish it all before I get back. Hi, Mom. Sorry, but I really don't feel good today. I don't think I'll be able to come over and help you. Again? You haven't been feeling well at all lately. All I've heard lately are excuses about why you can't come and help me. Sorry. If you can't even take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of my son? I bet Brandon's doing all the work around the house these days, since you're sick all the time. You're not faking it so he does everything, are you? No, I really haven't been feeling well. Let me educate you on what it takes to be a wife. Sometimes you need to work yourself into exhaustion for your husband and your family. Put your own feelings behind you. Just because you don't feel good doesn't mean you can slack off from your responsibilities. Take some medicine and get over here to pull these weeds. I don't think medicine will make me feel better. I feel really queasy. I can't leave my couch. I'm not interested in hearing more excuses. Even if your stomach is upset, you need to do it. Suck it up and get over here. I told you I'm not coming. If you lived down the street, maybe it would be different, but your house is an hour away. And? I don't think I can make it without getting sick. Like I said, I've been in really bad shape lately. From now on, please text Brandon if you need anything. Excuse me? So basically, what you're saying is, make Brandon do it. He's too busy with work. You, on the other hand, just stay at home all day. You have a lot of free time, which is why I ask you. Brandon and I have already talked about this. Since I haven't been feeling well lately, he told me I should rest and only worry about taking care of myself. Please understand that. That sounds a bit selfish if you ask me. Sometimes I get sick, but you never see me take a day off, do you? Plus, I'm far too busy to waste my time doing things like pulling weeds. Take today, for example. I have my tennis lesson. I go with Dana. Is that why you won't be home all day? Exactly. My instructor said I've made a huge improvement in my serve. I gotta keep it up. Maybe if you got some exercise like me, you wouldn't be sick all the time. It would probably do your body some good and help with your infertility treatments. That's why Dana comes with me. She's trying to have kids too, you know. I pray for her to get pregnant every night before I go to bed. Yeah, but she doesn't need infertility treatments like I do. In fact, the other day, she said she heard it's better to rest as much as possible when going through the type of treatment I'm getting. She knows how much of a struggle having children is. I know she wants the best for me. Why are you even trying to have kids? You should wait until Dana has them first. I want her to give me my first grandchild. Her baby would be way cuter than yours anyway. On second thought, you should stop getting those treatments for now. It's a waste of time and money. Or at least until Dana has her first precious baby. Wow. I don't know what to say. Oh, it's already time for me to leave for tennis. I lost track of time after hearing all of your pathetic excuses. Anyway, do what you need to do so you can feel better and get over here to help me around the house. 
Like I said, that's not going to happen. Don't talk back. Do as I say. Uh, if you don't turn your attitude around, I'll make you come live with me so I can teach you how to act like a proper housewife. Not to mention, teach you some respect. I didn't mean to disrespect you. Oh, I feel bad for Brandon. He has such a useless and self-centered wife. Do your job as a housewife. I shouldn't have to be telling you this. An attitude change would really do you some good. Marissa, I'm so sorry. I just saw your text. Did my mom really try to get you to go over there again? Yeah. I think it's time to tell her. She needs to know I'm pregnant. You think? I personally don't want to tell her, but I know if we don't say anything, she's going to keep harassing you. You don't have to answer her anymore when she texts you like she did today. I can't just ignore her. She lives alone. If she actually needed help, I want to be there for her. Yeah, I get that. But ever since we got married, she's been asking for way too much from you. It'd be one thing if she asked nicely, but it sounds like she's demanding you to help her. I think she's just lonely. Ever since your dad passed away, she's been different. That probably has a lot to do with it. If I was in good health, I'd help her. Right now, the morning sickness is killing me. Once I get over it, maybe it would be good for me to move around a bit and help her. I know you'd help if you could. You're too nice sometimes. We should tell her now so she'll stop being so annoying. You don't need extra stress on top of feeling sick all the time. All you need to worry about is our little baby and your own health. You're right. I'm just worried about making your sister feel bad. I know she's trying to have kids too. If anything, she'll be happy for you. Don't worry about her. They've been having trouble just like we did. I wouldn't be surprised if she starts on infertility treatment too. I know, she'd probably be happy for us, but it's still tough to see people around you get pregnant when you're trying hard but can't. On the other hand, I think your mom would go insane if we told her we were having a kid before Dana. She said she's praying every night for her to have a baby. She wants Dana to give her her first grandchild, not me. That's a pretty insensitive thing for her to say. Maybe we should just cut our ties with her altogether. If that's what you think is right, I won't oppose. But it's not like she doesn't know where we live. If you try to cut her out of our lives, she'll probably just show up at our door and make a scene. Or she just wouldn't accept the fact you don't want to see her anymore. And she'll be even more cruel to me. Remember, I'm going to be the one who'd have to deal with her if she shows up at our apartment. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, that was a bad idea. You're just trying to help. Most people wouldn't want to stand up to their own mother to defend their wife. I'm so happy to have a husband that'll stick up for me. The best case scenario would just be for all of us to get along, though. Unfortunately, I think we're past that. Ah, oh, she's so stubborn. We've tried to be nice, but it's obviously not working. I hope she doesn't start directing her anger at Dana for not being able to have a baby before us. It's impossible to predict how she'll react. She's a loose cannon. Yeah, I guess. I just wish it didn't have to be like this. Trust me, I would love for everyone to get along. That's not up to us, though. The ball is in her court, and it doesn't seem like she wants to change her behavior. You're too good of a person to say anything. I'll take care of her from now on. I was also thinking, maybe it's best we move once the kid is here. As it is right now, she's working you like a slave. Yeah, I guess there's no way for her to come over if she doesn't know where we live. Right? Honestly, though it might be better to move before you have the baby, 
We'll be too busy to think about moving once the baby is here. Plus, we'll need more space once the baby's here. I'll look online tonight at some places. I'll talk to her soon. I'm not going to cut her out entirely just yet, but this is definitely her final warning to treat you better. Gotcha. Thank you so much for your help. I'm sorry to have to put you through this. No, I'm the one who should be apologizing. She's my mom, so I feel responsible. I don't want you to have to worry about this anymore. It's already risky enough to have a baby, not to mention when you throw in stress like this on top of it. I'll tell her you're pregnant. Are you sure? Ugh, maybe it would be better if I told her? Don't you think it would start a fight between you two? If it does, that'll make it all the more easy to cut her out of our lives. I'll deal with her. I'll tell her not to text you for every little thing from now on. If she doesn't stop, just block her number. Ugh, I don't know. I don't want to go that far. I'll at least see what she has to say if she texts me. All right, that's fine. Leave everything to me. I'll let you know how it goes. In the meantime, rest up. Okie dokie. <laughs> Don't work too hard. You're going to need all your energy in your battle with your mom. <laughs> Marissa! Do you have a minute? Good morning, Mom. How are you? I heard the news from Brandon. You were pregnant this whole time. Yes, that's right. Sorry for not telling you right away. I was planning on telling you once my morning sickness went away. It's fine. I'm the one who should be apologizing. The first few months of a pregnancy are really difficult. It feels like morning sickness is never gonna end, and you're tired all the time, right? Oh, well, there's no need for you to apologize. Well, I might have been a bit insensitive about saying I wanted Dana to give me my first grandchild. But once I heard you were pregnant, I didn't care that you were giving me my first grandchild instead of Dana. I've done a lot of thinking this past week. I haven't been treating you very nicely, which is why I wanted to apologize. And of course, congratulate you on your pregnancy. Wow, Mom. Oh, I'm so flattered and moved by what you've said. Oh, thank you so much. I mean it. Don't mention it. I have one little favor I'd like to ask you. You're probably thinking I said all that nice stuff because I have a favor, but it's not true. I really need your help. Oh, I don't think that at all. Is everything okay? Well, actually, I have to go to the hospital. Really? Uh, are you okay? Don't worry, it's nothing serious. I actually broke a bone in my leg. Technically, it's a hairline fracture. Oh my god. Oh, I had no idea. You must be in a lot of pain. I think it's a way of the universe getting back at me for the way I've treated you lately. At my age, it might not be as simple as putting on a cast. I might need to spend some time in the hospital. I hate to ask you this when you're battling pregnancy sickness, but... Do you think you could bring over some things to the hospital for me? Getting it all together before I leave is a bit too much for me right now. Of course. I'm actually feeling pretty good today. Should I come bring it now? Are you sure? Ah, oh, you're an angel. Do you think you could come by this afternoon? No problem. I'll let you know now, though, that if I start to feel sick, I'm going to call Brandon to bring everything over to you. 
No! Don't tell him about this. What? Right now, he and I aren't speaking to one another. We got into a fight. I don't trust that he'll help me if you ask him. Oh, I had no idea. But I'm sure he'd understand if you were in the hospital. I don't think so. So don't mention anything to him or Dana either. I'm not sure. I'm feeling fine now, but like I said, I could start feeling sick any minute. If anything, relying on me might not be the best idea. Don't worry about it. The only thing I need is for you to bring some things over to me. After that, the hospital will take care of me. I won't need to ask you for anything else. Are you sure? I'm a little worried. I really would feel better if we let him know about this. It sounds pretty serious. I'm a tough woman. A broken bone isn't going to be the end of me. It's not like I have a disease or anything. Once you bring me what I need, I'll be fine on my own. Don't worry. Okay, if you say so. Send me over a list of things you want me to get for you. I'll get everything together and bring it over to you later. If I suddenly start to feel sick, I'll let you know, and we can figure out what to do. Thanks. I'm counting on you. Hey, I have something I want to talk to you about. What's up? You told me you wanted to know if your mom texted me, right? Well, she did. Earlier. She specifically told me not to tell you, though. What did she say? She said she broke her leg. She also said she might have to spend some time in the hospital for it. I didn't really understand why, but I just went along with it. Are you serious? Did she say how? No. She told me not to say anything to you. But I feel like this is serious enough to tell you. Ugh, I feel bad for going behind her back, but I thought it was better that you knew. Why did she even text you? I told her not to bother you anymore. She said you guys got into a fight and weren't speaking to each other. That's why she texted me instead of you. She said she didn't trust you to help her if she asked you. Something's not right. I don't know. She did apologize to me and congratulate me on getting pregnant. I never expected her to apologize to me, but I was happy she did. It seems like she changed. What? She really apologized to you? Now something's definitely not right. She really did. She said she was sorry for not treating me nicely. Where are you right now? I'm at the hospital to bring her some stuff she wanted. She asked me to bring over some things for her. Luckily, I was feeling better today, so I wanted to help. Get out of there. Don't go inside. Why? I'm already here. I'm standing in front of the hospital right now. She's planning something. What could she be planning? I didn't want to tell you this, but when I told her you were pregnant, she said some really awful things. That's why we haven't spoken to each other since. Oh my god, really? What did she say? I'd really prefer not to say specifically. But it was about her hoping you would lose the baby. I got a weird text from Dana's husband the other day. He said my mom randomly asked to use their printer. When he looked over to see what she was printing out, it was a list of things that were bad for pregnant women. Oh, no way. Oh, I hate to even think this, but is she planning to use the things on that list against me? Unfortunately, I think so. I thought as long as you two didn't see each other, it would be okay. I told her if she came to our place, I would disown her. I didn't want to stress you out with all of this, so I didn't tell you. I never thought she'd scheme up a way to see you. So she lied to me about everything. I'm so sorry. 
right now. You need to get as far away from that hospital as possible. Get home ASAP. Lock the doors when you get there, and don't let anyone in. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm so sorry for falling for her lies. It's not your fault. She took advantage of your kindness. I'll try and get off work as soon as I can. Thanks. Oh, please come home as soon as possible. But don't worry about me. I'm not going to let her win. Marissa! How long are you planning on avoiding me? I can't get in touch with Brandon either. What's up with you guys? Oh, hello, Mom. How's your leg? Broken? I've been waiting for you at the hospital this whole time. No, you haven't. I know you're lying. In case you've forgotten, our intercom has a camera. You seem to be standing just fine. Oh, my leg didn't hurt that much that day. Unbelievable! What's the big idea? I should be asking you that. Why did you call me down to the hospital where you weren't actually staying? What type of horrible plan did you have for me and my child? Oh, I guess the jig is up. My plan was so close to being a success. What's that supposed to mean? You know if you harmed me or my baby, that would make you a criminal. What were you planning? Something that was far better than having a pathetic, worthless woman give birth to my grandchild. You just had to go and get knocked up before Dana, didn't you? Do you have any idea how much energy I put into making sure Dana had her baby first? And yet God answers your prayers instead of mine. If you were a decent person, you would have waited until she was pregnant first. Dana thinks the complete opposite. She was ecstatic that I finally got pregnant. I doubt that. Every time her time of the month came, she was always so down and gloomy that she'd have to try again to get pregnant. Probably because she didn't want any more pressure from you. She wanted it to be over just as much as she wanted to actually have a kid. She told me it was a nightmare dealing with you. She said you'd come banging on her door every month to check and see if she was pregnant yet. She and I are always on the same page for everything. When I told her to get good grades in school, that's what she did. When I told her what university I wanted her to go to, she applied only there and got accepted. Before she graduated, I told her what kind of job I wanted her to get, and that's the type of job she found. She did get married a little bit later than I liked, but oh well. She only listened to you because she knew you'd make her life miserable if she didn't. She didn't have the energy to keep fighting back. She resents you for controlling her life so much. Nah, what do you know? She's not like Brandon. She willingly listens to what I tell her. She just pretended to be happy about your pregnancy because she's nice. She probably seemed happy on the surface, but was dying on the inside. I know my daughter better than anyone. Oh, do you? Because she told me she's actually given up on having children. What? She told me to tell you that. She also said that she doesn't want anything to do with you anymore. What are you talking about? I just saw her last week. I saw her. You mean you showed up at her place after dinner and demanded to be let in, right? Did she really say she doesn't want kids anymore? Is that true? Yeah, it is. 
she said she was scared to bring a child into this world if you were going to be its grandmother. That's ridiculous. She's been holding it in for a while. But she's reached her breaking point. She was appalled and disgusted when she heard you were going to try and do something to harm me and my baby. That's what pushed her over the edge. She said she never wanted to see you again. Hang on! This can't be happening! None of my calls to her are going through! She's probably pressing ignore when you call. Or she just blocked your number. Ah, whatever. I'll just go talk face to face with her. You could try, but I don't think you'll have much luck. They moved to a new apartment yesterday. That's impossible. Go ahead and see for yourself. Knock on her door. See if she answers. How could she? After everything I've done for her. I let her down the path to success. <laughs> what do you want me to do about it? Besides, it sounds like that's just what you wanted her to do. Not what she actually wanted. It was all for her. I lost my mother at a really young age. When I got married, I was so excited to technically gain a mother again, even if it was just a mother-in-law. More than anything, I wanted to have a good relationship with you. <laughs> Boy, I was such an idiot for thinking that. Now I don't want anything to do with a psycho like you. Who are you calling a psycho? You, you psycho. Or maybe you'd like it if I called you human garbage instead. Brandon and I are taking a page out of Dana's book. We don't want to have anything to do with you ever again. We don't need anyone that would even think about, let alone be ready to harm our child. Did you move to... Where are you? I'm coming to find you. Oh, <laughs> did you show up at our old apartment? Like I said, you're a psycho. I'd rather die than tell you where we are. Let's just say it's far away from you. This is the last time I'm ever going to be in contact with you. Hang on. Oh, if Dana isn't having kids, I don't care. I'll spoil your child instead of hers. So stop saying you're gonna cut me out of your lives. I'll move back into your old place. I don't care if you give this kid a million dollars. You're not coming near us. But why? Are you that stupid? Because you're a lunatic. We're never going back there, and we're never seeing you again. Where did I go wrong? All of my children are abandoning me. At least you got that part right. I talked with Dana before we both decided to move. We knew that if only one of us moved away, it would make the other's life harder because of you. That's why we decided to leave at the same time. This is how my children repay me for giving them everything. I think we've all done more than enough for you. Especially Brandon and Dana. They've been sending you money, haven't they? This isn't just about money. Oh, I know that. It would have been much simpler if it were only about money. We've learned from our mistakes. And Brandon and I now have an example to teach our child about what kind of person not to become in the future. Not to mention, you've taught me what not to do as a mother. Just hang on. Maybe you should rethink things before you do something you'll regret later. I really have thought about what I've done. I can't stand the thought of being on my own. There's nothing I care less about than you struggling to survive on your own. Don't come near my family or Dana's ever again. No. I don't want to be on my own. 
I want my family. The only excitement I had was waiting for my first grandchild. I have nothing left to live for if I can't see my grandchild. What are you saying? You always have your tennis lessons to look forward to. <laughs> Once your fake injury heals, I'm sure you'll be back out on the court in no time. I don't care about tennis. Well then, I guess you really are out of luck then. Don't you think it's a little ironic? After all that energy you put into tennis, in the end, you're the one who got served. After that, my mother-in-law really hit rock bottom. She finally accepted the harsh reality that her family abandoned her and never wants to see her again. If I had to guess, she was probably going to physically hurt me somehow to make me lose the baby. Knowing her, she'd try and make it seem like an accident and then we'd conveniently be at the hospital so she could confirm I lost the baby right away. That's all speculation, though. Who knows what she was planning? We hear she was cooped up in her house for a while, but then things took a bizarre turn when she got really into fortune-telling. She burned through almost all of her savings, going to fortune-tellers to try and figure out a way to win her family back. After she nearly ran out of money entirely, she went around asking relatives to borrow money. But unsurprisingly, no one gave her a dime. Now she's busy trying to repay the debt she sunk herself into, trying to look into the future. I guess the psychics weren't good enough to see that coming. <laughs> In a way, this is a way she's finally paying for her actions. After everything settled down, I gave birth to our beautiful son. Now I have my hands full taking care of things around the house and raising our little boy. Dana actually changed her stance on having kids. Once the pressure from her mother was gone, we discussed everything and she decided she wanted to try again. Not surprisingly, she was able to get pregnant. She's seven months along right now. She said she's nervous to become a mother, but at the same time, she's looking forward to it. In a way, I'm thankful for my mother-in-law. Without her absolutely insane behavior, neither family would have found the happiness we have now. I'm going to be the best mother I can be and give my son the best life possible. In other words, do the exact opposite of everything my mother-in-law did.